Before we start, I wanted to thank Audible for sponsoring this video. I love listening to books or podcasts when I edit and Audible is one of the best providers of audiobooks out there. So I'm very happy to have them as sponsors. They actually have a great selection of photography books as well and you can get one of them for free with your 30-day trial. So go to audible.com slash Irene Rudnick or text Irene Rudnick to 500-500. Hey guys, Irene here. Welcome back to my channel. And if you are new here, thank you so much for stopping by. My name is Irene and I make weekly photography videos on YouTube. I have made uh, two videos before where I added your pictures and a lot of you guys really liked them. So this time I thought, why not let you guys added my pictures? And a lot of you guys really liked this idea as I've gotten over 500 submissions it took a while to go through all of them and you better trust me i opened every single email and checked out every single image that you guys sent me i picked my favorite images and i'm gonna review them in this video but before i start i just wanted to quickly mention that i'm gonna try to be as unbiased as I possibly can and any of the negative criticism that I might give in this video is only intended to be educational and in no way I'm trying to be rude or evil or malicious. Just wanted to make sure that everyone is clear on that. People that sent me their images are fully aware that I'm going to be doing this video and showcasing their images and talking about these pictures. Also, by no way am I saying that I'm some kind of expert on editing. I'm just giving you guys my personal opinion based on my personal preferences. Okay, so let's get started. So whenever I added pictures, I always start with skin retouch. I just find that uh, it's really important to kind of lay down that base and make sure that the skin looks really nice before you start any other editing. Uh, a lot of the times when you add filters like contrast, the clarifying filters or any color filters, it will kind of uh, make the skin look a lot worse than uh, it usually is. It will kind of amplify all of the little imperfections. So here's an example of what I was just talking about. Uh, I actually really like the colors here, the exposure, the contrast looks nice. But because I'm, I'm assuming that the person didn't edit skin at all before adding all of these, it made the skin look pretty bad. Um, if we zoom in, you can see all of the little imperfections. It almost makes it look muddy and dirty. Um, and again, this is why it's so important to do your skin retouch before you add any of the uh, effects. I find that this is where uh, you can really distinguish between an amateur and a professional retoucher. Uh, a lot of the times amateurs don't really know how to retouch skin so they kind of just leave it and it makes the image look a little bit unfinished. Here's another example of that. Again, I really like what they did with the contrast and the colors but because there was no skin retouch done, it just makes it look like something is missing, you know, like we need to polish and perfect the image. Now here's a great example of going a little bit overboard with your retouch. So um, the person really, really smoothed out the skin here. And what I also don't like is that they kind of missed few spots. I mean, if you are going for that perfect porcelain, no pores look. You gotta make sure that you really apply it everywhere. I can see a little spot missed here by the nose, a little spot here missed here by the eyebrow, a little here uh, by the lip. Um, you just gotta commit to it if, you, if you're doing it. But also, again, something that really gives away um, an amateur photographer is this kind of uh, skin smoothening. But other than that, I think the retouch is actually really nice. And again, I really like the colors, but the skin retouch, this is where it's lacking. 
and I actually did this exact mistake myself when I started doing photography here's a picture from years ago uh, it's pixelated because I found it on my Facebook I didn't know how to retouch skin so I just went ahead and blurred out everything but as you can see there is a lot of bumpiness on her face and this is where I would highly highly recommend you guys learn dodge and burn for skin retouch it's gonna give a really nice and natural looking skin here's another thing that I see quite a lot and I know some of you will not agree with me on this is just my personal preference but I don't really like frequency separation uh, I would never recommend it to any of the amateur or starting photographers because you have to be quite skilled to make it work um, and it's quite complex this is an example of quite a good frequency separation but it gives that effect that I personally really really dislike at first glance it looks really nice and I would definitely classify this image as a good retouch don't get me wrong but that frequency separation I just think it's so obvious it creates this plastic perfect skin with lots of bumps in it I understand that it's supposed to kind of show the pores but it's very fake looking um, it's like adding too much texture to perfect skin it's just something doesn't really sit well with me there um, and then when you zoom it out again it just looks really textured again this is just my personal opinion my personal preference I would much rather use dodge and burn technique than frequency separation if you would like to keep the texture in the skin uh, and still make it look really flawless and nice this is a great example where the retoucher could have used just a little bit of dodge and burn to finish this picture by the way I absolutely love this retouch it looks really really great and I'm just nitpicking here and I'm just mostly just uh, want to show you guys mm, what I can do to kind of make this picture even better I'm gonna go ahead and play my dodge and burn action by the way this action is free for all of my sponsors and after as you can see it really really changes an image and we can still preserve all of that texture there okay this next picture is where we go a little bit overboard with dodge and burn and I totally get uh, the effect of you know making the eyes look very bright very sharp but if the eyeballs are the widest thing in the picture it looks very unnatural very fake and it really draws your attention not in a good way so let's see if I can correct that just a little bit alright so before and after Again, if you like that look, if you want to make the eyes really stand out, go for it. But make sure that the eyeballs are not the widest thing in the, in the image. Um, another thing I noticed here is a very unnatural highlight on her shoulder. Uh, shoulder will never look like that. Um, it's not going to be a very wide highlight like this. First of all, it's very bright. And second of all, it has this type of shape where a natural highlight on the shoulder would be more would be more so like this okay so let me just go ahead and fix that quickly and show you guys the difference all right so now the difference between the shoulder of how it was and uh, how it is now again you can still have that highlight there no problem with that it just has to be done a little bit better okay so this next picture again we have a lot of trouble with dodge and burn this spot right here specifically is the brightest spot again on the face and it 
oh, I, you you can see it immediately. This is the first thing that you see is the nose. Never go super high with your highlight whenever you put it on the nose. You want to put the nose highlight just right here and maybe a little bit right here. Never go higher. It just makes it look like the model has a bump right in the middle of her eyebrows. Anything that is lighter is gonna make the area protrude and everything that's darker will make the area kind of more, more sunken in. So you, again, you have to be quite strategic with where you place your um, dodge and burn. Uh, here, another area where I wouldn't put too much highlight. And then especially when we have so much darkness going around the cheek area right here. Also on her chin, the highlight is going too far. Um, you want to apply the highlight maybe just right here. Don't go too far on the chin because it will make it look like she has a wider, more manly chin. So uh, let me try to fix this quickly um, to kind of show you where you would put the highlight. Okay, so I fixed it just a little bit and I feel like it already looks so, so much better. Again, just shows you how important dodge and burn is and uh, it's really important to kind of understand where to place it. I'm gonna leave some tutorials in the description where you guys can check out my dodge and burn technique and where to put it. But again, it can just really change the model's face and um, in a really good way or in a really bad way. <laughs> Another mistake that a lot of amateur photographers do is add a lot of different special effects and I've definitely done this myself. I remember when I discovered layers in Photoshop, I loved the double exposure look, uh, but it rarely made any sense in the images and it kind of made it look really funny, like uh, some sort of ghost is coming out of the girl's body but I remember at that time I thought that that was the coolest thing ever and I thought that it made the picture look just so much more professional and interesting and cool when in reality it just makes it look very amateur. There's few submissions uh, with these kind of effects and there's some bad ones, there's some not very bad ones and even some good ones that I like. Let's start with this one. We have a butterfly added that's sitting on the model's uh, hair. I love butterflies. I've done a photo shoot where I had butterflies. I just find that it's um, quite hard to make it look very natural. And here we have a case where it looks very fake. I actually really like what they did with the eyeshadow and the lips. It all kind of matches, so I like the colors. But yeah, the butterfly, man, it's just, it looks really fake. It looks like someone cut it out of the magazine and like place it on there and then um, it's kind of transparent in some spots. Um, also the butterfly is extremely sharp while the model is really blurry in a lot of places. So uh, that's where it makes it look really unnatural and honestly I would just kind of refrain from these type of little things. Um, and unless that's the look that you're going for, but for this particular picture, I would 100% just go no butterfly. And then we have from the same photographer, doves flying around the model. Um, while the butterfly picture, I think, you know, it's not that bad. I think the doves are pretty bad. <laughs> Again, they did pretty good job on retouch. Like the colors look nice, her skin looks nice. Um, if you would just take in those doves off would be beautiful retouch. Yeah, it doesn't add anything to the picture rather than just like, what is happening here? <laughs> also, I've seen a lot of people add uh, kind of bokeh or glittery effects. Here's one of them. Um, it has to be a real picture of bokeh or glitter that's screened onto an image, uh, but this one is not. I can tell that someone made this overlay with just like little spots that they painted on with the paintbrush in Photoshop and it's just, it looks 
off. <laughs> Again, I'm, I'm trying not to be harsh. Um, I think this would be a great retouch without it, okay? I'm just trying to say that these effects uh, only cheapen the image. They make it look worse. They're not adding anything to it. Now, this is the effect that I don't think is too bad because if we compare these two images, uh, here the overlay is fake. Like I said, it's been made with like a, with a Photoshop brush while this overlay is not fake. This, someone took pictures of glitter um, and then made this overlay so you can like screen it on top. Um, and I think it looks pretty good. It doesn't look that bad. I don't like this crazy big um, bright spot over here in the right corner. I find that if you have a spot that's brighter than the model in the image, then you should take it out. You want all of the attention to be on the girl, on the model. She has to be the brightest spot in the image. And if you have a spot that's brighter than her, either make it uh, less bright or just take it out completely. But this overlay and this effect is actually not that bad at all. I, I think it kind of works in here. Now, here's again the fake bokeh. Uh, you can clearly see that this is not real, that someone again made this in Photoshop with like a brush uh, because they are so perfect and uniform and there are all sorts of weird colors and, oh and we also have eyelashes I didn't notice that at first um, yeah it's just another thing that makes it look really fake and weird honestly you guys trust me on this just ditch these effects they're not adding anything cool to your image we have a lens flare in this image and um, why I don't like it here is because it doesn't really make sense. Now there's nothing wrong with adding some lens flares. I think they're pretty cool. I am a big fan of lens flares, but they have to make sense. The sun is directly behind the model. It's not coming from the right or from the left. If it did, she would be lit uh, completely differently. So in this image, they put the lens flare uh, on the left side and it just doesn't make sense because the sun is behind her. So again, it just kind of looks fake and your eyes are just kind of not sure um, about what's happening. Um, I also have a few cases of vampire eyes. This is what I like to call them. And again, it kind of goes with the, uh, the case of white, the whites in the eyes being super bright. This is kind of in the same category, but now instead of just the whites being super bright, we have just your iris like really really bright and really crazy looking and it kind of looks like a vampire um, uh, here's a, a great example of that I mean to me it just looks very mystical very werewolf vampire esque and if it's the if it is the look that you're going for go ahead but I just don't think that it fits with this theme this very ethereal like pretty flowers curly hair it just doesn't make any sense and again I find that most often it just cheapens the whole look and makes it look amateur um, Here's another one just like that. It just makes it look very unnatural. And don't get me wrong, my pictures definitely don't look very natural most of the time, but they don't look super natural, right? They look um, like a very amplified beauty rather than like fake beauty. Um, here's uh, more vampire eyes, but very subtle. And um, this is something I would go for if you like that look. Um, brighten them up, but don't go go overboard. Here's another example that I actually quite like. Like it makes it look very mystical and cool, but without it looking scary, like it is in this picture. Color grading. This is something that a lot of people struggle with, uh, amateur and professionals. I think this is one of the hardest things in retouching because there's so many options and so many ways you can go with your color grading and I've gotten so many different versions of one pictures when it comes to color grading it's pretty cool to see um, some were pretty good some were pretty bad uh, one of the mistakes that I've seen people do a lot is just kind of 
go with very unnatural colors. So let's say with this picture, for example, first of all, her skin looks dead. Um, the greenery around her is now like this orangey, yellow, uh, white color with blue tinge in it. It just absolutely, it, it makes no sense. And everything looks great here. The exposure looks great, the skin looks great, but the colors are just so off. Here, we just went really crazy with that saturation. Whenever your skin looks orange or purple or gray or green, it's not a good look. Again, here, I mean, I don't mind the green in the background, but the model herself looks very blue. Uh, now, what I would do in situations like this, let me open this in Photoshop and quickly show you guys. Most of the time, I like to edit the skin separately from the background, so I would go into selective color. I can choose the neutrals and we're gonna go warmer until I kind of see that the skin looks a little bit more natural. I'm gonna choose white and go a little bit more yellowish. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Again, I'm just doing this very quickly. Then I'm gonna press Ctrl I to invert the mask. And then I can take my brush and brush this only where the model is. And then I can go a little bit lower on the opacity. All right, so this is before and after. I think it just makes it look a lot more alive and natural because she looks so frozen in the before. I have so many examples here of all sorts of color combinations that you can possibly think of. I think um, while you can really go ahead and play around with the background, I think it's really important to um, still keep the skin looking a little bit more normal. Here's a great example of what I'm talking about. The background is very unnatural, it's like this blue color, but because they kept her skin looking a lot more uh, real, it kind of works, you know? So you can definitely experiment and, and go wild with your backgrounds, but the skin is something that you should always keep looking pretty natural. There's just all sorts of colors here. <laughs> Pink skin, blue skin, green skin all sorts of even here like uh, you can totally still keep uh, the image really warm but I mean this is just orange it's not a very flattering color just in general um, it looks like she's on Mars or something let me try to make it a little bit more a little bit less crazy okay see even that just toning it down a little bit. You can keep it super warm. Just toning it down a notch makes it look so much better. Next up, we have Liquify, and I'm a really big fan of Liquify. If you watch any of my Photoshop tutorials, you know that. And um, it's another thing that it's very easy to overdo. And if you do overdo on Liquify, it, uh, it will look all sorts of bad. Um, Here's the first example. They clearly done something to the model's face. So this is before and this is after. Hmm. It's very bizarre. I'm not even sure what they try to do here. They like squished the head somehow. And they flattened the hair, which I'm offended by. <laughs> I, I always make the hair bigger. I find that bigger hair uh, looks really good, it makes the head look smaller and uh, shooting with an 85mm like I always do, I find that it, um, it really helps to make everything look just a little bit nicer. Let's go to the next one. I'm assuming this person watches my, my YouTube tutorials because there's some things that I've noticed here that I often do, but they've done just a little bit of a mistake. So again, they made the hair look bigger, but in this case, um, 
it doesn't look that great and I'm gonna show you what's the problem here so whenever you're making the hair bigger you want to make sure that it's mostly big on the bottom and not at the top you don't want to make the top of the hat look really big um, you want to make the sides look big so if I just make it just a little bit smaller here at the top you can still keep it relatively big and then I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger here in the bottom and this is it just that little bit of an adjustment and it makes it look a little bit better uh, the before looks more teased and looks a little bit um, old school but now that I fixed it it looks more like she just has a lot of volume in her hair so make sure that you never put too much volume at the top more volume on the sides all right now another thing that I noticed here uh, is uh, they stretched an image um, they stretch an image this way just this way because it's a lot smaller this is the the before and this is the after and this is something that I do in a lot of my pictures but you can clearly see the line it's going right over here where they stretched it and same over here this is the line where they stretched it and um, you always want to make sure that you don't do it so how do you do it without really showing that line um, first of all sometimes there's just so much you can stretch okay so I'm gonna stretch it like this I, I always um, make another layer just in case there's something that I don't like that I want to fix then I grab it with the marquee tool I see free transform distort and then I drag it to the side and we can see just a tiny bit of that line over here that separation uh, you, you see the bokeh was straight and now it's more stretched out so what you can do is you can take your eraser tool and just kind of erase it where that line is just a little bit and it's gonna look a lot more natural okay uh, so this is one of the techniques that I do same here you can kind of see where the bokeh starts to stretch just erase that erase that just a little bit and that line of where it stretches it's gonna look a lot more natural now I'm all for giving models like shape <laughs> but again you have to be very inconspicuous about it <laughs> and I mean she looks like she has some booty now uh, again it's just it's just too much it looks really weird. it makes her look angular and um, also um, her butt wouldn't be just going up like this if if you want to make her butt look bigger <laughs> you should have stretched out more right here rather than like right here because this just makes it look like she has less some kind of hump um, a butt doesn't sit that high the butt sit a sits a little bit lower so I would not do this normally but let's say you want to make it look like that it's not here this is where you want to make it bigger all right okay you see the difference a butt sits lower it doesn't sit so high up and then again the hair needs to be fixed just a little bit you want to have a really good transition uh, between that poof okay and also if you are stretching things in the background you know make sure that you're gonna erase them like all of these trees are kind of bending in the background you gotta make sure that it's gonna be erased all right this picture I wanted to quickly showcase uh, obviously they made her eyes look bigger and um, again it's just your personal preference if you want to go and change the models features uh, also make sure that the model is okay with that uh, but in this case it actually looks good like it's obvious 
but it actually makes sense and it looks good they didn't go overboard and make her eyes look absolutely crazy like a doll but they are bigger and I think it creates an impact it looks pretty good here again the same mistake they went uh, a little bit overboard with the hair it looks like she's wearing a helmet like again never go high up top always on the sides so let me just fix it here we go oh that looks so much better already so much better helmet no helmet and finally i wanted to show some of the images that i really liked uh here's the first one it's a very interesting edit and although the skin doesn't look perfect i think it really works here the only thing i would change is uh, do a little bit of color correction over here at the top of her hair it's um a little bit more dull than the hair on the bottom but honestly i'm just nitpicking other than that i think it looks really cool the skin looks awesome her eyes really stand out the colors look great uh, this is another work from the same photographer it's completely different from what i normally would do and it's very it has that like hdr effect but it really works here and you can really see the style of uh, this photographer i really really like it Here's another great retouch of Emily. Uh, I really like this picture right here. I think it looks beautiful. It's a little bit too sharp in some spots, like some of the hairs over here, you can really see them if I zoom in. But other than that, I think it looks beautiful. Um, one of Talis that I really like, uh, we can really see how bright the eyes are here. And I think they added like a little bit of a catch light here, but it kind of works it works with this editing and i really like it here's a picture where i think the effect and kind of going overboard actually works uh, i rarely like these type of images but this one i think is beautiful and good job another one of peyton that i think is really nice the skin the eyes the colors it looks great another one of talise I really like this one of Cheyenne. I love how sharp it is, but at the same time, it's smooth. She really stands out from the background. They kept her skin uh, looking natural while the background has like a little bit of a different color. Really, really good. I love this picture and I absolutely love what they did with the hair, like adding more hair in. I think it made it look so much more cool uh, and I know that this takes a lot of work just blending the hair making it look natural and this definitely works and definitely looks natural I'm still not sure about this image right here there's elements of it that I really like I love the lips I think they look really good I love the eyes I'm not sure about the skin retouch there's just a few things that I would change again we have the um the frequency separation going which i don't really like and it's just a little bit bumpy so i would um work a little bit more on dodge and burn in a few areas but there's something about this picture that really catches my attention and they transformed it from the before quite a lot so i'm really into this one another rendition of talise and although this one doesn't have those uh catch lights i still think it kind of works and, and I like the colors on this one. I really love this one of Peyton. Uh, this teal and red really works nicely together. Really, really good. All right, so this is it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, I'm sorry if I didn't feature your image here. Trust me, I've tried to feature as many as I could. Uh, let me know if you like this video and if you would like me to do a part two. Subscribe to my channel, like this video, and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye!